Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that couldn't be happier to be back in the great state of Utah. Great to have you back, Cody. Gosh, I swear if his check doesn't clear, I'm going to be dead. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at U-Boot from Phalanx. U-Boot, Me High Hill from Phalanx, is a game all about shoes and collecting shoes and how much we love shoes. It's a game about a World War II German submarine. Now, essentially, what happens is you have up to four players who take on different roles within that submarine as they go on some kooky adventures. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you right now, if you're looking at this video as a way to help you learn how to play this game, you might want to check out some other videos. There are better videos on that. I'm just going to give you the barest overview of how to play this game and then give you my thoughts. The game board is a 3D model of a German U-boat during World War II. You're going to uh, each have, for each of the four roles, you're going to have uh, four figures as well as various player uh, stations, player boards that you're going to put in front of you that rep represent your unique roles. The roles in the game are the captain, the first officer, the chief engineer, and the navigator, and they're each going to do specific things. It's kind of like uh, Captain Sonar, only instead of playing against another uh, real-time crew, you're going to be playing against a real-time app uh, on your computer or tablet that will help you uh, essentially maneuver through the game. So this is another combination of video game and board game integration. Now each player is going to have four different figures for their particular role, meaning you know you're going to have the captain and then the the other officers and crew associated with the captain. Same thing with the engineer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but they're going to have a unique color that will be on all of those, and then a unique shape that will be different amongst the different uh, kind of subsidiary roles. Now, during the course of the game, you may have to pull out tokens from a bag that will reflect a kind of a color and a shape, and it means that specific crew member. But here's the thing. You've got that crew member card, which then you then flip over whenever there's a change of watch. When there's a, there, whenever there's a change of watch, essentially the crew changes to those people, and the, the other crew kind of goes back to, to bed, as it were. Now the app is going to go ahead and give you a specific uh, mission, tell you where to go hunting for convoys uh, or, or other objectives, and you're going to go ahead then and plot a course. And this is where the navigator comes in. He's going to use his tools to actually find out where we're going and where you are. There's a little bit of math involved, but it's not too bad. You go ahead, you plot the course, and you set the course in the app. Um, you're also going to be doing other things. For instance, the navigator is also going to be responsible for preparing meals for the crew and make sure that the meals are right. You have different food tokens. You have to prepare them in just the right way in order to make uh, meals for the crew. And you do need to feed your crew, otherwise bad things might happen. The captain, of course, is going to issue all the orders, and he's also going to be taking care of a lot of the weapon systems, you know, the, the torpedoes and whatnot. You've got the first officer who's going to be doing things like the Enigma machine, receiving codes. So he's going to be on the app most of the time, interacting with the app. And then, of course, you have the engineer who's going to be fixing things, maintaining things, uh, and that, that's kind of his brief during the game. Now, critically, the captain is going to issue orders. Now, he has to issue a mobilize order so that everybody can move to their specific places because each of your figures has specific icons on it, and you have to have those specific icons in order to do those specific tasks. So the captain will issue a mobilize order, and that mobilize order will let everybody on the boat move to different stations in order to take care of whatever it is they need to take care of. 
But whenever the captain issues an order, he moves his order figure along the order track. And he moves, those all, moves that all the way down. Now once it gets to the very end, if he still has to issue orders, he can issue orders on the morale track. Now the problem here is, if you issue orders on the morale track, whenever you move down to certain spots, you're going to have to draw certain cards. And bad things are going to happen. You've got three decks you draw from, and the further down you go, the, the, the more scary and potentially dangerous those morale cards will be. First officer is also going to be drawing uh, event cards. If ever the app says to draw an event card, that uh, will trigger some kind of events on the board. And he's also going to be responsible for handing out kind of the the, the injuries and the first aid cards, depending on if, if if something happens and they may get a certain crew member may get an injury. He's going to go ahead and draw those cards as well. Now, critically, as you are engaged with the game, you're going to be trying to sync your enemy ship. So you've got to make sure you set up the, the attack angle right. Um, you can listen through through sonar to kind of hear where they are and attack them, or you can look through the periscope and kind of see where they are to attack them. You've also got some guns up top so you can fire at uh, uh, incoming aircraft. You can also take shots at uh, uh, ships, but if you're submerged, of course, you're going to want to use the, the torpedoes. And that takes actions, of course, to, to load, to flood, and then, of course, to fire. So essentially, you follow the prompts from the app, you sail around the sea searching for those convoys, you blow them up to gain renown, to gain fame, and then when you know it's appropriate, you can come back to the uh, port, uh, assuming you haven't been killed on your mission, and when you come back to port, then you kind of look at your renown, you see how well you did. And of course, the point of the game is to try to gain as much renown as possible and be the greatest U-boat crew of all time. So friends, again, this is just a very... <laughs> I'm just scratching the surface of the rules for this game. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and go out and say here, this ha probably has the biggest learning curve of just about any game I've ever played. Um, there is a lot of minutia here. This game says it is a U-boat simulator. They ain't lying. Now, this simulates things that happen on a U-boat. You can have all sorts of things happen. You can have gunshot wounds You you know, from, from incoming planes or whatever. You can have electrical burns. You can have fires. You can have flooding. Um, all sorts of things, but again, you got to prepare the food. Has got to be, you know, prepared correctly for the for the troops, uh, for the crew. Um, you've got to, you know, decode the the Enigma machine. You've got to plot those courses, and that can, you know, lead you wrong. This is very much a simulator. But when you um, kind of, and, and I'm going to be blunt, uh, I'm not even sure we played everything 100% correctly here. In fact, I'm almost certain we did not. Um, I did play, I've only played one game so far, and that's because I don't know when I'm going to be able to get this to the table again, so I wanted to put my views out here now, and if I get back to it again, maybe I can make another video or, or, or just let you know kind of what my thoughts are once I've played it again. I will say this about this game. Once you kind of get the basics down, it is incredibly immersive. It is incredibly immersive. You really feel that pressure and you 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 feel that the picture in your head and it very much does remind me of Captain Sonar which is one of my favorite games but of course that's um you're playing against another crew here it's it's much more um there's a real palpable atmosphere here that I like a lot the game does just extraordinarily well and I really really like that quite a bit but I that, that learning curve is so high, and like I say, after reading the rules and rereading the rules and rereading the rules, I'm still not convinced I've got everything down correctly. And I, I, I just, I, I, I'm kind of torn between this experience because I think this has just got so much good stuff in it, and it is, it draws you in so well, and it's tense, and you're, I mean, it's, it's a great cooperative game, but at the same time, it's just, bear to learn and and I wish they had come out with kind of and, and within there there are kind of ways to make it a little easier and a little harder but I really wish there were just there was just an, uh, an even more streamlined set of rules that was just completely streamlined that maybe eliminated some of the things like preparing food and and and, and made it a little easier to, to to kind of solve the math things for the navigator or maybe you could you didn't have to mobilize or I don't know just, just things that that would make the experience move a little better move a little easier i wish i wish that was part of it i wish they made kind of a, a u-boot for dummies scenario or whatever so what i'm saying is u-boot is a mixed bag if you're willing to put the time into this game if you are willing to put the 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 effort and mental you know work into this game i think you will really really like it i think you'll be richly rewarded 
Um, I've talked to some people who love this game. But if you're a more casual player, this game's probably not for you because it, it you you need to study it. I mean, I, I told my friends before we played it, you know, I'd read the rules and I'd read through it. And I'd read through it. And I told all my friends, uh, you guys probably want to read up on the rules you're going to play before we play it. And I don't think any of them did. <laughs> uh, I, even, I even just said, you know, just watch a video on the rollers just so you're, you're familiar. And I, and I don't know that any of them did. Maybe one of them did. And it hurt us, you know, because this is one you want to go into knowing as much as you can before you play it because it's just a bear. So with that in mind, it's a trap before you buy it, a positive trap before you buy it, but I can't fully recommend the game as it stands with, with that, that incredible, incredible learning curve, which is just massive. Um, I want to play this again, and when and if I do, and I'm, re I, I'm pretty sure I will at some point, uh, I want, I'm eager to give you my thoughts again and see how my, my thoughts on this game evolve. But that's my two cents. Try it before you buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and here's another friendly face to welcome me back to Utah. Hey, Cody. Gotta say, man, it's really awesome to have you back. I look forward to more board game playing with you, buddy. <laughs> All right, take care. Gosh, he picks like the worst time to have to do these stupid videos. Hey, somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Hey, somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Great to have you back, Cody. Gosh, you think that'll satisfy his ego? <laughs> You're right. Nothing will. <laughs> yeah.